Hello? Hey, man. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I, I'm, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, thank you very much for taking time to do this interview. Oh, it's my pleasure. No worries. Oh, it's awesome. Well, it's great to be able to talk to you. I mean, being such a, a huge fan of your work and, you know, just uh, being able to see uh, uh, this side of you again with ages and uh, the fact that uh, Uncrowned, the first album in about five years from you guys, is finally coming out August 21st. Yes, that feels that feels great. It's uh, been a long time coming. Um, finally. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, yeah. It's just it's so great to see it, and uh, I've had the album for a, a few days now, and I just love what's going on there. I mean, you add so much uh, to the music that you know, just like if if it wasn't for your take on it, it it just wouldn't feel the same and natural sounding. I mean, just the the way that you guys come together and write these um, this amazing music together, and just showing off this great melodic black metal side. It's just it's so great to see that in 2020. Wow, wow! I'm so uh, big words. I'm so happy about that. Really, uh, really appreciate it. That, that's uh, so nice to hear. I mean, that that gives. Uh, uh, gives me uh, <laughs> the will, the will to go on, <laughs> write more. But yeah, it's. Uh, I guess there is not that many bands that do this kind of it's black metal. I feel like right now it's kind of exploding. There's a lot of new stuff coming out. I, I'm not keeping a super close eye on the scene as a whole, but if you if just a quick, quick glance, kind of tells the story that there is a lot of stuff coming out and a lot of new bands and projects that I have never heard of. Uh, and But I, I, what I feel is there's not that many um, that does, I don't know, maybe uh, carries on the, the, you know, the legacy of, of 90, mid-90s Swedish melodic black metal in that, in that sense. Um, so I feel like what we're doing is basically what we ourselves want to listen to. So me and Andreas just, uh, it's basically what we enjoy listening to and you know, if no one else is doing it, then we got to do it ourselves. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so you know, with all that in mind, I mean, uh, with uh, the debut album coming out about five years ago, I mean, what was it? What's it like to finally be able to have this thing coming out? Uh, I mean, it, it's been such a long process. With the first album was pretty. Uh, let me see, when did that come out? That was four years after we wrote the first song, and uh, yeah, so it was kind of a long time that too, but. But once we had that first album established, it was it felt easier and uh, and a little more straightforward to go and uh, work on the second album because you know we had the soundscape was our, our sound was a little bit more cemented and we we knew kind of like what we wanted to write and how to how to convey that you know our musical vision that we had so it was a little easier and uh, more straightforward but it still took a long time but because of First of all, me and Andreas are extremely nitpicky and uh, detail oriented, so we will just go back and forth, uh, the, it, it, you know, forever to to rework stuff and rearrange and uh, rethink uh, things that didn't feel up to par. And it was the same thing with the first album. So that that is very, uh, I, I feel happy and privileged that we can work from uh, unconstrained in our own studio to just go back and forth uh, to to fix things. Um, I would not be able to put out anything uh, that I've written myself that I wouldn't be 100% happy with. I mean, this, you're never going to be 100% happy, but <laughs> but you will uh, 99.5 at least. So uh, so it took a, a long time, but it feels so good to finally have it out. And and I think we could have possibly finished it a little earlier, but life and things just there's been a lot of things uh, going on so so everything just uh, takes time i'm sure that the third album is not going to take five years that's uh, almost a promise <laughs> <laughs> oh and that's great to hear that as well too i mean yeah and you know just the fact that you were able to come together again and make this next album i mean i'm very grateful for that because i am i love the first album so much and i love that approach and this uh, this sophomore album i mean it just it, it sounds so much more refined and just like you were talking about like uh, you wanted to be as close to 100 percent as you can possibly be and when i listen to this thing i mean everything sounds like every single note matters for what you're trying to do i mean there's no excess of stuff on there i mean like every single a note of instrumentation is working for the song and that's what makes melodic black metal sound so good when you have all the right instruments and you're able to just uh, create this atmosphere and you guys absolutely nailed it once again with this for that reason 
thank you so much. Yeah, it's uh, we I I can relate to that sentiment that that every note matters because uh, it actually for me it does too. I, nothing is there by chance or or because of laziness or anything. It's it's all uh, thought out and uh, and re redone until it it felt good. So the arrangements are pretty. Um, pretty. Um, it's it's not intricate. I mean, things are are pretty uh, straightforward. But even when you listen to things, I mean, there's not there's not a riff that's not that just haphazardly thrown together. Uh, if you know what I'm saying? So, so uh, I'm happy that you picked up on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I'm I'm such a huge fan of doing that with albums and just like going from start to finish and no, noticing if like uh, things are meant to be together, if it's just a great collection of songs, whatever the case is. And yeah, I mean, just with here, I mean, it's just, it's so great to see the atmosphere that you guys have created this time around. And, and, and you know, just the, just the work that you're able to do on this too because i mean you have such great ideals for instrumentation and can play different instruments as well too and it's great to see that you can use all of that in your repertoire yeah i mean we're, we're uh, fortunate to uh, have uh, you know uh, different skill sets and and try to put those the best use possible uh we uh yeah there's still some violin going on on this album and not a lot but it's it's there uh when it's needed and um uh, you know some some keyboards at the right moments it's very uh, uh sparingly but but it's when it's called for it's definitely necessary so uh we we try to utilize whatever uh <laughs> weird weird skills we we possess <laughs> <laughs> oh, totally. And, you know, I, I love the fact that you approached it that way, too, because, you know, just like we we're talking about with uh, every note mattering. I mean, the fact that you didn't put a violin all over the place, the fact that you didn't put keyboards all over the place and you know what you wanted to do, the sounds that you wanted to create and put them in the right spots rather than just uh, having it throughout the entire album from beginning to end. And that's what really helped out the songs is that variation. Yeah, I, I think we uh, we really, it's so easy to just, okay, now let's, let's just make a, a orchestra or keyboard heavy black metal uh, album and call it a day. But that's not really, first of all, that's not really what we ourselves enjoy. And that's, I mean, sure, if you want to put on the Spiritual Black Dimensions by Dimmer Borger, you want to get your keyboard fix, your 90s keyboard fix, then you can do that. And that's, that it's, it's a great album, but, but it's, uh, um, that little, the variation of, of, uh, adding those extra elements where needed, that, that kind of makes it more interesting to me. Uh, to, uh, if you've got to listen to a whole album, you want things to be a little, uh, D dynamic without taking you out of the immersion, you know what I'm saying? So not, uh, you have to keep, you have to hold a, a um, yeah, there has to be a common thread running through the whole thing. So, so you don't, if, you, if you're uh, dozing off listening to an album, you're just going to suddenly wake up, you're like, oh, holy shit, there was a, uh, you know, suddenly we had a rap beat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, not that extreme, but you know what you, you understand what I mean. So, so it's <laughs> putting putting the right um, extra added elements in the right places to uh, keep things interesting and, and dynamic is uh, for me that's interesting and, and, and important. So, oh, so very true. And you know, w with that in mind, I mean, obviously, with uh, your background and what you've been able to play, I mean, what's it like being able to go from different genres and be able to spread your wings and show off the different styles of what you like to play? Um, I mean, uh, it's uh, I don't, I haven't really thought of that in that sense. I mean, I've been recording also music for so many years in so wildly different genres and mixing and. and producing stuff so so it's all to me it's just different mood sets I, it's just uh different w what are you in the mood for now like you want to it's growing up also listening to a lot of classical music it's it's uh just different types of moods like do i want to listen to uh, you know what, what kind of classical music you want to listen to or so sometimes you're in the mood for black metal sometimes you're in the mood for power metal i don't really differentiate between I don't value one thing higher than another. It's just different ways of expressing yourself and it's different ways of, of working with music. And there are different codes and different, um, uh, constraints of, of how to, um, portray music and, and what tonal languages are acceptable and not. And in ages, we're kind of, we, we, we <laughs> kind of shackled, um, uh, 
by a kind of a limited tonal language. Not limited, I wouldn't, that's the wrong word, but it's, it's, we have put out boundaries for ourselves in, in how, uh, what kind of melodies work, what kind of, uh, uh, progressions work, you know, what kind of soundscape works. So it's, it's, and it's very rewarding and easy and fun to work also because me and Andreas are so, our musical vision is, goes so much hand in hand. So we can basically, when we're sitting in the studio writing together, we, and some of us, one of us comes up with an idea, we can basically just glance over the shoulder and just either nod or shake our heads simultaneously and just like, ah, this, this is not good enough. This is just, uh, sounds too happy. This sounds too, uh, you know, whatever. So, uh, so it's very, uh, rewarding. Uh, but working in different genres, I feel is, is, for me, it's super important because you know, I need that, I need that outlet of going different, uh, expressing different things. And, uh, um, so orchestrating for, for, uh, for power metal, for example, is, is way different than orchestrating for ages. Uh, but it's just two different ways. And, uh, so I, I don't really, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, rewarding for me to work in different, different types of music. Oh, oh yeah. I couldn't agree more. And, you know, it's just, it, it benefits your style of, uh, the way that you play too. Because, I mean, if you're only pigeonholed being able to play one style, you start to only be familiar with that kind. Even if you practice on your own, dif- doing different kinds of things, if you're not able to, spread your wings out and do that stuff. I mean, it kind of becomes on the back burner, but the fact that you are able to go through all these different styles of music and yeah, I mean, no, no, uh, priority, uh, genre one over the other, but you know, just like being able to know that, uh, something in melodic black metal is not going to work with power metal or, you know, being able to focus more on an orchestral album isn't always going to work out in a different genre and just being able to show off all these different sides. And, you know, it's very fortunate that you are in that position to be able to pull that off, be able to work on that on your own studio. And yeah, just being able to keep working as that as a musician. Yeah. I, I really, uh, I, you know, I just, uh, what I enjoy and, and I'm super happy that we can spend all the time that we need, um, to, to, uh, complete things the way we want them to. I mean, if you, if you were, uh, like a lot of people are maybe uh, held back by oh we got three weeks booked in this in this uh, amazing studio and it costs this and that much money and you have to put everything all the arrangement has to be done you have to have pre productions done if you can't change anything it's gonna take up too much time you have to record and you have to mix everything in whatever two or three weeks I mean that that would give me an absolute brain aneurysm to to try to pull that off because it's just a uh, I, I I'm way too <laughs> too picky with uh, with things before I'm happy with the results. So, so we need, uh, uh, I, I'm happy that me and Andreas have been able to go back and forth like this for such a long time. And then, uh, so when, when something's finally done, I know that, you know, I'm at the, I did the best I could with what I had. And, uh, that's, uh, that's enough for, for me and be happy. And I, and if, if I, you know, can strike at, at listeners, uh, uh, hearts and uh make people enjoy it then that's just such a great reward to to feel and just get that feedback it's just a, a great feeling since especially i mean for ages we're not we've always been a, a studio uh band so we're not touring uh for better or for worse i mean in, in this day and age no one's touring so we're fortunate in that we don't have a you know uh lack in that that part of, of income but uh, uh but for us it's just uh being just confined to the studio to produce stuff is uh, uh, the only feedback that we get is basically from you know fans online and, and uh, uh, reviews and, and comments. So so that's uh, that is the uh, uh, very rewarding when people uh, enjoy that what you're doing. It's very important. Oh, very much so. And yeah, just like you said, I mean, with this being a, a studio band and not having to worry about the touring, I mean, you can focus so much more like on the production and making sure that the songs can be the best that they can sound because you don't have to worry about that live aspect and being having to worry about having to drop things in that live setting. You can just work on those yeah. songs and make them the way you want them to be. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we don't absolutely have to take it. I mean, I'm not ruling out the possibility of ages ever doing live shows. I, I, I love being on stage, so I wouldn't, uh, uh, rule that out. But for as, as for now, that, that'd be, have, that'd have to be a thing for the future at one point. We'll, we'll see where life takes us. But, uh, um, 
but as for now, yeah, we we, we stick to the studio, and um, and as you said, we exactly we don't have to think about what works on stage and what doesn't. We just try to to um, you know forge the songs in a way that just uh, feels uh, feels right, basically. <laughs> oh, totally. So with that in mind, I mean, when you were working on Uncrowned, I mean, was there any anything in particular that was a a bit of a challenge for you, like uh, deciding like uh, what kind of synths you wanted to use, what kind of instrumentation, uh, anything like that on your end? It's it's always uh, hard and difficult to, to find the right uh, right sounds. Uh, it was a lot of a lot of back and forth. I think you, I have uh, early versions of everything that sounds pretty horrible, and uh, <laughs> you go you, you go back and forth, and uh, uh, you know you, you uh, reamp back and forth and try to find the right. Uh, keyboards uh, and samples and stuff and it's it's always a, a lot of work and sometimes you overdo it and then you have to wait for a week and then go back and like oops uh, this was one french horn too many <laughs> so let's take that out of the equation and uh so it's, it's always uh, uh yeah a, a lot of work nothing in i would say in particular is it's just the same procedure as, as always the same thing with their first album uh a little less so this time around since as i mentioned on crown felt as a whole more of a streamlined process and more of a uh we we, we knew uh what we wanted to do and we knew how to do it in a, in a better sense than we did last time around so it was a little easier uh so we could i didn't have to fiddle around that much and and try to uh, reinvent uh wheels left and right it was more uh i i got it figured out in the back of my mind i just had to pull out the right tools and so it was a little easier but it's always a struggle it's always exciting it's like you know uncharted territory every time you start a new song so oh i can imagine but you know with that in mind i i I know you know that when you have that when you find that right instrumentation when you find the right uh synths and patches that you want to be able to use in the keyboards and you hear it back and it just sounds like it was meant to be that way that's got to be such a rewarding feeling yeah it is i mean it sounded don't want to go too technical but it's that's always the case as you said uh, synthesizer patches or, or sample libraries or even down to like what reverb are you going to use so okay I have a reverb on the vocals it's just you can't just slap one on like it, you can uh, you know how every reverb in existence basically sound like but then you have to choose the exact you know the w- the exact thing that hit the spot <laughs> in that particular song in that arrangement and that alone can you know take um, take time and take a few hours to just figure out what a specific thing uh, on a specific song needs so uh, not rushing through things and and taking time to listen and uh, and feel is uh, super important to me from a you know from a producer mixing perspective obviously so oh very much so and you know another great uh, feeling with that too you know making sure everything works together in that collective is n- not just the audio but the visual as well too and the album cover that you guys have for uncrowned is just absolutely majestic i love the way that it looks and the use of the colors and uh, how it all came together like how did it come together um great question yeah i mean if, uh, I'm, I'm happy you like the album cover so so do i <laughs> it's a uh... Uh, it's really good. Uh, Chris Coles is the name of the guy who, who made it, and um, we found him, uh, just uh, stumbled upon him. We, we really uh, looked all over the all over cyberspace for a guy who who would uh, fit the the kind of imagery that we were uh, envisioning, and um, uh, we just stumbled upon this guy, and and he was absolutely astounding. And uh, we just sent him a couple of we had some concept ideas. Um, and sent him the lyrics for, for the, the title track on Crown and, um, uh, just came up with, uh, looked at some, some of his refer, some of his other pictures and just like, Hey, we were looking for something in this, in this style and, but with this, uh, color palette, for example. So he came up with some really great concepts, uh, and we, uh, we agreed on something and he just kept working and, uh, he, yeah, it's a super amazing cover and it's like, uh, this scowling crown figure, uh, standing, looking out over a burning, uh, landscape of, I guess, cathedrals and, and some, uh, religious, uh, uh structures. Uh, so it, it, that really, I think, encapsulates 
the whole feeling of the album and the the kind of the message also um, that that runs as a common thread throughout the album. So it really captured that super well, and uh, uh, yeah, it, it looks really majestic. So I'm happy about that. Oh yeah, and I can just imagine when the vinyl comes out, how beautiful that's going to be to look yes. at in the full vinyl size. Yes, I have held it in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I got the the album. Yeah, they just uh, I haven't opened it. I'm thinking I might do like an unboxing thing of the. Uh, there is a a um, gold marble vinyl edition also out. So looking forward to to. Uh, I haven't dared uh, open the the rip off the plastic just yet <laughs> <laughs> oh very nice and, yeah and you know uh, y- you were talking about it a, a little bit about the color palettes and you know especially when um, you're you are kind of doing a throwback to that swedish melodic black metal i mean i i know for album covers that it's it's so easy to go with like the dark colors the blues the purples because that's so synonymous with the style but i love the fact that you went with these kind of colors and on the previous album you know not going that direction either just really being able to expand and show that you are your own identity yeah i mean i i feel it, it's funny that you mentioned that i you're it, it's true that a lot of the uh you know, early 90s mid 90s uh swedish black metal i had but i think it's down to also another amazing uh artist uh necrolord uh he calls himself what's his real name i can't remember right now but um anyway he did all the you know dissection and dark funeral early albums uh Amazing, but as you said, they all they're all dark bluish uh, palettes. Um, so yeah, I think this uh, this really um, makes it stand out a little bit. Uh, you also want like, because this is also the digital digital age, so everyone will just stream it, and it's kind of important. You don't want to, you know, it's a little boring to think that way, but you have to uh, that you want just even a thumbnail to stick out a little bit. So you want, hey, what's this? I want to click this. It's kind of a stupid way of <laughs> thinking about it, but but I guess we're all forced uh, into that territory now. So I think he really got that to, to uh, stand out uh, really well. And it also is a little homage back, if you look, to one of my absolute favorite uh, melodic black metal albums is uh, uh, Slaughter Sun, Crown of the Triarchy by oh, yes. uh, Dawn. Uh, such an amazing album that still... Uh, they, they, it's... Uh, stands the test of time uh, still to this day i really enjoy it and that's just uh, also a very bold uh <laughs> bold album cover with just a, a nuclear explosion uh, <laughs> in, in red and yellow so uh yeah yeah no but it's a uh, I, I really I'm, I'm so happy with how it turned out oh totally so, you know, in, in the mind of what everything's going on here in 2020, I mean, obviously, this was a year none of us could have predicted was going to happen to us. And, um, you know, the fact that this album is still coming out on uh, the 21st through Black Lodge Records, I'm so happy to see that. And, you know, uh, d- during all this time that's been going on, like, uh, what have you been doing to preoccupy yourself? Well, I have been, uh, uh, there's more time to, um, write music. Uh, I'm doing some of that, and I've also done some, um, some, uh, optimizations in the studio and, uh, stuff like that. I have definitely not been doing as much as I should be, <laughs> be doing when you have more, uh, free time. Um, so, uh, but yes, it's a perfect time to, to write a little more, but you know, I'm, I'm, probably doing a lot of what what everyone is doing of binge watching netflix shows <laughs> uh but it's getting a little boring at this point so i feel like i uh, need a little more creative uh um, outlet at this point but now it's also a lot of it has been a lot of work with the uh, with the ages album and leading up to that and leading up to the release is going to be you know uh, interviews and uh, like this and written stuff and uh, more promo so so that's uh things to to occupy my time for sure oh but, for, oh for sure and you know it's just, even if you are taking a, a bit of a time to just relax and you know watching tv and then being able to work uh, sporadically on studio or being able to write songs you know the fact that you are still able to do that from home and work on that production side work on the music side i mean it's very fortunate that you know you did go about this approach and made sure that you could do all these things from home and you know once eventually things get back to some kind of normal that you are that much far ahead and you know have those songs ready for the future yeah I, i'm super happy about that actually it's uh we already started you know some ideas for a third ages album and 
Um, so so it's it's already cooking. I mean, w- once you send the master of an album away, you know, to the label for printing and everything, you end up. I I end up in a. It's just like a limbo, like some some uh, just a, a black hole of of just uh, complete. Uh, unwilling to do anything for for some time. <laughs> it's just such a creative, uh, what do you call it, like a complete drainage of of any sort of of uh, creative willpower. <laughs> so so it takes some time to go back into that. But uh, but now I feel like it's it's a, there is a, a really nice streak of creativity uh, happening. So I'm trying to to. Uh, you also have to look at it as actual works work sometimes to so just you know get your ass out of bed sitting down in the studio and just work now i'm going to work for 8 hours and if something comes out of it that's good if not then so be it i'll continue another day um you can't really sit and wait for inspiration to come from the ether realm like that doesn't happen you you have to uh, just uh, treat it as a uh, work because then creativity will come. Like you start doing ideas, you just start playing around with, uh, with uh, you know, uh, guitar stuff. You just play things. You just play around with the uh, with keyboard sounds, and then things will come after a while because you submerge yourself into this, um, to this mood uh, eventually. So, so that's uh, and, and there's more time to do that now. So I'm, I'm happy about that and really you know looking forward to. To uh, keep this uh, keep this train going. Oh, totally. And yeah, I mean, there's so much to look forward to in the future when it comes to that. And I think that's actually a great spot to be able to uh, end this conversation. I mean, being able to uh, look forward to the future. And of course, uh, coming up on the 21st of August uh, through Black Lodge Records, uh, this amazing new album with Uncrowned from Ages. I, easily one of my favorite albums of 2020 so far. I mean, I just I love what you guys done here. I mean, it feels like such a great natural progression of where the band is right now. A, a great soundtrack for 2020 as well too i mean with all the the atmosphere and chaos controlled chaos that's going on with it and i i thank you so much for uh taking time to be able to talk to me about everything that you do i mean uh being a huge admirer of yours i mean with ages and twilight force and so much of the other work that you've been able to do it's been an absolute pleasure thank you so much i really appreciate it It was all my pleasure uh it's uh super nice talking to you and uh i hope i hope everyone will uh enjoy the album it's uh yeah it's uh, just uh uh, soon, a couple of weeks. Yay! So <laughs> uh, well, I hope, hope you'll enjoy it uh, and and uh, listen carefully for all these these uh, meaningful notes that we've been talking about. <laughs> <laughs>